Greetings, friends. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to get two things. A rock from outside, the significance of which I'll explain in a bit, and a candle. If you don't have one or live in campus housing, grab something special to you from your time at Co, such as a symbol of your religious tradition, a book that changed your life, a gift you received, or something you made. Pause now to get those items. The baccalaureate service during commencement weekend provides a space to reflect and make meaning of your experience at Co. As you bring your time here to a close and look ahead to what's next for you, I invite you to pause with me and contemplate your journey at Co. If you've been to a service on campus, you'll know that we typically begin by lighting a candle. A candle represents holding space. In fact, I'd like you to know that I have lit this candle every weekday since we started staying home. I felt like I was holding vigil with and for you as you finished your semester. Candles can symbolize the divine presence, and I also like to say that the candles around the room represent our individuality, our uniqueness, while the one we light together represents community. So as we light our candle today, we remember that we are one and many and acknowledge the sacred among us. Please light your candle now or place your item somewhere close to you allowing it to represent holding space as the candle does. Let us first slow down and spend a minute in quiet reflection. I invite you to consider the journey you've been on the past few years, asking yourself this question. What has changed me the most? This may be a mentoring relationship, maybe understanding the world or the people in it in a new way, or a challenge or hardship you grew through. Perhaps you were changed by a close friendship that invited you to see the world through someone else's eyes. Or maybe you were changed most by moving across the state, country, or world to attend college here. Join me in this time of reflection, which I'll end with our opening prayer. Grounding spirit, we come together in gratitude. Gratitude for the time, the opportunities, and the growth. These students sought meaning and found purpose. They sought to be known and found themselves deep friendship and nurturing mentors. They sought clarity and found a path that will continue to unfold and shape their future. Be with us now as we reflect and give thanks. Amen. Our reading for today comes to us in the form of a poem written by Maya Sarton called Now I Become Myself. I'll read an excerpt and then offer my own reflection. Now I become myself. It's taken time, many years and places. I have been dissolved and shaken, worn other people's faces. All fuses now falls into place. From wish to action, word to silence. My work, my love, my time, my face. 
gathered into one intense gesture of growing like a plant, made so and rooted by love. Now we become ourselves. College has this strange way of helping us become. You may have stepped onto campus with certain questions. You may not have known what you came for or even what questions to ask. You may have had specific goals, may have met them, may have failed a time or two or changed course altogether. College has this strange way of helping us become, or at least leaving us feeling like we are well on our way. Or perhaps you're leaving with more questions than you came with and realize now just how much you have left to learn. All important steps on the journey to becoming. With this year ending on an unusually odd note, I suspect that some of you might be feeling a bit resentful of this global pandemic we are in. It is, after all, what kept us from returning to life as normal after spring break. It is the reason you're seeing me by video today. You may not have even been able to say goodbye to your friends, professors, or staff mentors. You may be personally impacted by the virus having fallen ill yourself or knowing those who have. It makes sense if you are grieving. Or maybe you carry grief for other reasons. Maybe you lost a loved one during your college journey and are crossing this threshold without them. Maybe you don't have the support you need from your family and are left feeling further isolated during a time in which you should be celebrating. Grief is an important place to sit in when we feel it. For so often we try to run away from pain. Avoid it, numb it, busy ourselves so we don't think about it. This time we are in is forcing many of us to confront our grief, anger, disappointment when we might usually turn away from it. My friends, we find ourselves gazing at what we might call the tragic gap. Educator and author Parker Palmer uses this language to describe the space between where things are and where they could be. The tragedy is the very existence of the gap. Right now, you might be standing in this gap knowing things could or maybe should look one way while reality tells a different story. There are many examples of the gap. Kids living in abusive homes, people dying unnecessarily, people risking their lives to go to work or to the grocery store. We find the gap in the absence of care, compassion, and nonviolence. Sadly, the gap will always exist. Things will never be perfect. But this time is unique in that we cannot help but see or be personally impacted by the chasm looming before us. It may or may not surprise you that I am going to encourage you today to spend your life paying attention to this gap. For when we pay attention, we hold the tension between the reality of the moment and the possibility that something better just might emerge. Palmer warns us that though we may try to keep our grip on both reality and hope, we often find the tension too hard to hold. So we let go of one pole and collapse into the other. This can look like resigning ourselves to cynical. This can look like resigning ourselves to things as they are and sinking into cynical disengagement or clinging to the ideal and floating above reality. And truly, 
Sometimes the tragedy is so overwhelming that we simply cannot look at it. But when we can hold the tension, we just might learn to live a different way. This third way emerges when we choose to act in ways that honor our own humanity and that of others. The language Palmer uses is honoring the souls of ourselves and others. In the midst of this hard thing, you have so much to celebrate. You are graduating college. You may have dreamed of changing the world, of making a difference, and now you go out and do that work. It is my hope that alongside any disappointment you might feel, that you also feel pride, joy, and confidence in who you are becoming. Much of life, as you likely know by now, is filled with these both and spaces. We can be both disappointed and sad, yet proud and hopeful. Hildegard of Bingen, a 12th century Benedictine nun, mystic and composer, said that in order to have balance, we should fly with two wings of awareness, one of pain and suffering, the other of hope and beauty, because that is what life always brings. We may not be able to answer the question of why this is happening right now, in this very moment in time. But I ask you to consider this. What will change for you the rest of your life because of what you have witnessed in these days, including things that are self-serving and those that are community serving? For we cannot pretend to leave this time untouched. We have and will continue to be shaped by this experience. I'm asking this question of myself and my response thus far is to make consumer and personal choices that treat the earth, its creatures, and the people in it with care. I'm seeking ways to connect more deeply with others, am embracing the slower pace of life, and am asking the divine for guidance on how I might best serve in this world. Feel how you need to feel right now and celebrate for this is indeed a huge accomplishment. And then, it is my hope for you that eventually you return to holding the tension. For when we learn to hold the tension, this is when and where we do the work we are called to do. This is where we become ourselves, made so and rooted by love. Amen. Now is the time in which I would invite graduating seniors to come forward and receive an item. This item symbolizes the theme of the service and goes with you to remind you of the message. It also serves as a collective call to action. This year I had to get a little creative choosing an item you can easily access on your own. Hence, a rock. The rock symbolizes groundedness, stability, foundation. In Christianity, the biblical text teaches us about building our house on rock rather than sand, for sand washes away over time, but rock is solid. The rock in this story represents the teachings of Jesus. In Judaism, God is the rock and is often called the rock of Israel. In Buddhism, we learn about sitting like a mountain, rooted in the earth and immovable. The meditative posture sitting with legs crossed is sitting in the form of a mountain. When leaving meditation, one takes this mountainness, this groundedness with them. Unmoved, one can act with wisdom and compassion, with coolness and calm. What is the rock that grounds you? What is the foundation on which you go forth from this place? Perhaps it is the relationships you formed, 
the mentoring or support you received, the shaping of your identity that occurred, the knowledge you obtained. Perhaps it is your religious or spiritual beliefs. Maybe you developed a greater capacity for compassion, empathy, and love for neighbor during college. Most likely it's a combination of many of the above, and perhaps it includes what came to mind during our time of reflection earlier. I now invite your peer and my friend, Allie, to offer her own reflection on what this means to her. My name is Ali Alvarez Sukrem, and I'm part of the graduating class of 2020. I know this isn't exactly the graduation we were hoping for, but I hope this provides some kind of closure to our time at Co. When thinking back over the four years I spent at Co, I couldn't help but think of my mom. She was my foundation, she was my support, she was my rock to be honest. When I told her that I wanted to move to Iowa from California for college, she kind of looked at me and was like, all right, so when do we go visit? And I remember feeling excited and relieved that she was okay with me going almost halfway across the country to go to school. But she was always like that. She supported me in whatever it was that I wanted to do. And I always felt like I could do anything because she would be there for me if I fell. I lost her about a year ago, and now that she isn't here, it's time for me to figure out how to do that for myself. And in some ways, I feel like that's how we all feel graduating college. We have to figure out what comes next. I'm so grateful for the people that I've met and the memories I've made during my time at Co. I'm forever grateful to the staff and faculty because I feel really smart and extremely accomplished. I mean, these last four years weren't exactly easy, but we did it. We survived four years worth of multi-page papers, exams, finals, and not to mention cat food. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that's one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. And there's so much more to come. In many ways, Co added another layer to my foundation, enough for me to make me feel ready to take on whatever comes next. I'm so excited to see what the future holds for me, for you, for everyone graduating in this strange year that is 2020, because there's kind of nowhere to go but up from here. The world is huge and the opportunities within endless. So make the most of what you got and don't worry. The rest will sort itself out. Thank you. Maybe you came to college with a strong foundation that you simply continue to build upon. Maybe your foundation crumbled during college and you've begun rebuilding. Maybe you're not sure what your foundation is right now. All are okay places to be. Return to the rock when you need a reminder of all you have gained from this stage of your life. Return to the rock when you're standing in the tragic gap and need a reminder of your strong foundation. While you don't need a special rock, if you would like one from me, I'd be happy to pray a blessing over one and send it to you. Simply email me your address. Graduates, as you go from this place, may you stand in the tragic gap See what this world might become. And when you are ready, be part of creating that world. May it be so. Amen. Blessings and congratulations, class of 2020.